Thank you so much for coming tonight. I was just uh, going over in my head, and, and this is our third concert in four months. So Mr. Wilson's been a little bit busy, okay? Uh, that is not an excuse or anything. I'm just saying our, our kids are working very hard on music this year. Uh, we've had an exciting year. We had a Black Hawk helicopter land in the parking lot. That was intentional, by the way. And so uh, the young people were able to go in that. But God has just given us a, a tremendous start to the school year. We're looking at, in a couple of weeks, being done with the first semester and uh, looking forward to the second semester. We are glad that you have joined us tonight for What Does Christmas Mean to You? And so I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then uh, the, the young people uh, have prepared a wonderful program for you to enjoy this evening. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the music program, the drama, the speech, all that, that goes into a program like this. Thank you so much for Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, who have dedicated their lives to uh, assisting young people, such as our, our students, with understanding music, with being able to perform music. And Lord, we just pray that they are learning things that they will use their entire lives to bring you honor and glory. What a great time of the year as we look at celebrating the birth of our Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for what you did for us in coming here, dying on the cross to provide a way for us to get to heaven. We just pray that you'd help the young people to be calm as they go through each piece tonight, help them to uh, represent you very well, to glorify you in all things. We give this evening to you in Christ's name. Amen. Program. What does Christmas mean to you? Today we will explore many songs and pieces, including some that were written hundreds of years ago, and even one that was written last month. Our program is divided into three sections. The first section will explore how Christmas is celebrated here in America. Picture in your mind with us. Christmas lights everywhere. Decorated Christmas trees. Gifts under the tree. Snow on the ground. Building a snowman. Santa Claus and reindeer decorations. A fire in a fireplace. Hot chocolate and eggnog. Fresh cookies with fancy icing. Christmas music playing everywhere you go. These are some of the things that remind us that Christmas is here. Please listen as our choir begins with Winter Lights.
Every who down in Whoville likes Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. Maybe it was that his head wasn't screwed on just right. Or perhaps it could be that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, disliking the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath were busy now, hanging mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew, every who girl and boy would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. Then the who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. They'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They'd feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch could not stand in the least. Then they'd do something he liked least of all. The Who's down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. The more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now, I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. 
an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. He laughed in his throat. Then he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. Then he looked around, but because reindeer were scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackled sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then he said, Giddy up! This is step number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed down the chimney, empty bags in his fist. The little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he growled, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. Twas a quarter past dawn, all the Who still snooze, when he packed up his sleigh, packed it up with their presents. Three thousand feet up the side of Mount Grumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Then he listened and did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low, then it started to grow. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, were singing now with no presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or another, it came just the same. Then he puzzled for three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, down in Whoville, they say, the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. The minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed down the hill in the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. to invite you all to join in on our Christmas program with us. Because as you know, the first part of our Christmas program is kind of your American Christmas. And I thought, what's an American Christmas without some fun Christmas carols? So we're going to sing a medley of four Christmas carols. Some you might know, some you might not know so well, but the words will be up there. So please join us.
Christmas spirit yet? There is a happiness surrounding Christmas that is hard to express in words. Did you know that different countries celebrate Christmas in different ways? Some countries build a giant goat out of hay. Others enjoy fresh seafood. Some light a tall red candle in their front window, and others share baked goods with neighbors. Some regions parade in their towns singing and others light fireworks. Every country is different and it has different cultural values and traditions. This second portion of our program will highlight some Christmas sounds from different backgrounds than you may be familiar with. We'll hear some sounds from ancient England, Venezuela, Russia, and France. Please listen as our band begins with green sleeves.
a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In the, In the book, book of Luke we find, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The book of John says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Christmas is a time of celebration, and what better reason is there to celebrate than God providing the way to a restored relationship with him. Please listen as our mass band plays an arrangement of the traditional Christmas carol, He is Born. Thank you. 
culture, your children and your grandchildren and your brothers and sisters, and they did a great, great job. They're going to go back, come back for one more song in just a moment. Uh, Mr. Wilson told me that the theme for tonight was simply this. What does Christmas mean to you? And we've looked at that around America. We've looked at that really in various places of the world. And then this last section has really been, what does Christmas mean to you as you study the Bible? So I thought about a person in the Bible. Her name is Anna. In Luke chapter 2, the Bible says there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And so here is Anna. She was a godly, elderly saint. Let me kind of introduce you to her. By the time the first Christmas arrived, Anna had lived a very, very long time. The Bible says here she was of great age. A lot of scholars believe that she was anywhere between the age of 84 and maybe 105. And so she lived there in the temple. What a beautiful, awesome place to live. But as we look at her, what did Christmas mean to Anna? Well, Anna saw that the Christmas timing was directed by God. The Bible says she's coming in at that instant, and so they're bringing baby Jesus to the temple, and Anna is there right at that very moment. You know, the Bible says when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. The Bible says he was made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And so Anna, as she saw this timing, she literally saw the Redeemer. She saw what other people missed. Because if you had gone to the temple at that time, there were hundreds, maybe thousands of people in the temple, and there she is, and she sees the baby Jesus, but she understands that he has come to be our Savior. He's come to be our Redeemer. And she understood that this timing was directed by God. It reminds me of Nicodemus when he came to Jesus. He wanted to know, how do you get to heaven? And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And maybe this evening, as you've come to watch the children and our students, maybe you're at that point and you say, well, how do I get to heaven? And God simply says, you must be born again. You must put your faith, your belief, your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And might it be tonight that God's timing is directed by, in your life this evening, where you might say, Pastor, I'm really not certain that I'll spend eternity in heaven, but I would like to be, and God brought you to this place at this time on this evening so that someone could sit down with the Bible and show you how you could have eternal life, how that you could know the Redeemer, how you could know the Savior. And so Anna, she understood that Christmas meant that the timing, her timing, was directed by God may very well be that our timing tonight has been directed by God as well, that he brought us here, it's not by accident, at this point in this time, to hear about the Christ, the Messiah, the one who the children have been singing about this evening. The Bible also tells us that Anna's Christmas was a time of thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving was, was directed toward God. For there in Luke chapter 2 and verse 28, verse 38, it says, She gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Uh, she really had a heart that was, was really set on God. And I think for Anna, she was aware of what she saw. And that time of seeing Jesus in the temple was a time of worship, but it was also a time of thankfulness. And I'm challenged for myself, and I'm challenged for each one of us, that as we think about Christmas, this is a wonderful time to stop, to pause, and to give thanks to God. To thank God for the many blessings he's given to us. To thank God for his gift, 
the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. To thank God for one another. You know, you watch all of those boys and girls up here tonight and you say, thank God for those children. Thank God for you parents who are willing to put your children in a Christian school. Thank God for the teachers that are willing to, to serve with you to bring these children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We look at all of the bounty we have here in the United States and we simply say, thank God for America. Thank God for the many, many blessings he's given to us. The psalmist reminds us, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And so for Anna, what did Christmas mean to her? It was a time that she could pause and say, I see God's time and God's timing working specifically in my life. What did Christmas mean to Anna? She said, this is a time for me to simply give thanks to God to thank him for all of the blessings that he's given to me. We go on in the text, and Anna's Christmas was literally a time for her to talk about God. In fact, her talk was directed about God himself. The Bible tells us here in verse number 38 that she spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. In other words, after she had seen the baby Jesus, she just wanted to go around and tell everybody, this is what Christmas is all about. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about his birth. It's about the fact that he came to die on the cross for our sins. That the Savior has come. The Messiah is here. It was a wonderful time to just be able to say the meaning of Christmas is the Lord Jesus Christ. He certainly is the reason for our season. And so it might very well be tonight that you look at this and say, what is God's timing in my life this evening? Is it an accident that we happen to be here? No, it's by divine appointment. So let's allow Christmas to be a time of thanksgiving and worship and adoration to our God. But it's also a wonderful time to say, let me tell you what Christmas means to me. Let me talk about Christ. Let me speak about him. In fact, the phrase there indicates that she just kept talking over and over and over about anybody that would listen to say, I want to tell you about the fact that I saw the Messiah. I saw the one who was going to pay the penalty for my sin so that I could spend an eternity in heaven. I want to talk about Christ. And so I'm challenged this evening as we think about what does Christmas mean to us? We saw America. We've seen different parts of the world. but We look to the scriptures we see that Christmas is really about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I encourage all of us, let's take time to worship our awesome God this Christmas. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for these boys and girls. Thank you for our teachers, our faculty, our staff. Thank you for all of the parents and grandparents and family members and friends who are here this evening. Most of all tonight, we want to say that what Christmas means to us means the Lord Jesus Christ. The God who so loved the world that he was willing to leave the splendor of heaven, to be born in Bethlehem's manger, to go to the cross, to pay the penalty for our sin so that we might have an eternity with him. Father, it would be our prayer tonight if there's a person within the sound of my voice who doesn't have that personal relationship with you, that tonight, before they leave this building, that they'll let one of us sit down with the word of God and show them how they can know the real reason, Jesus Christ, for this season. And for that, we'll be grateful and thankful. In Christ's name, amen. Think the boys and girls have one more song? Actually, everybody has everybody one more song. Everybody has one more song. Okay, Jeremiah. So can everyone stand with me? We're going to just sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas as we are finishing up, and I want you to join in with us. <laughs>